Well, let's get down to business. Stephanie, why did you write this book? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I needed There's something to do. <laughs> Do you want me to speak to Yes, if you would. Uh, I don't know whether I should forgive him. Have you read Forgiveness and Other Acts of Love? <laughs> Why did I? Well, I need to answer the question, actually, because it is a good question. Um, I've been writing for a long time. In fact, I've been writing... Uh, writing's been my main work for the best part of three decades now, which is quite a long time. And those of you who know my work will know that I've moved from a very explicitly um, psychological way of writing, which was nevertheless, I think, and I hope, highly informed by a very compassionate view of one another, and also a very optimistic view of humankind, in as much as I I continue to believe that um, most of us could think better of ourselves and could think better of one another. So that has been very, very consistent. But over the years, I've also moved somewhat to be able to be more courageous, perhaps, uh, more frank, perhaps even more self-assured around the centrality of spirituality in our lives. Um, that is, I suppose that this book reflects my awareness that um, a psychological perspective very much helps us in our social relations, but it's only part of the picture. And I suppose from Forgiveness and Other Acts of Love onwards, I've been very feeling increasingly able to say, could we bring the spiritual to the very centre and if we were to do that, how would things look? How would things look if we really took up a spiritual prism and examined some of our social needs, some of our personal needs, some of our social crises, and certainly some of our social questions? So I guess it's a mixture of um, experience and insight. And I also felt, one last point I'd like to make, is that it was timely. It's a very important thing for a writer to somehow be slightly ahead of the times, or with the times at the very least. And one of the unexpected characteristics of 21st century life, and I'm eager to hear about that from the two of you, is that religion, the religion debates have come up to be as prominent as they are However, I'm also really aware that the strident voices at either end, the strident voices of, of religious fundamentalism and the strident voices of um, fundamentalist atheism are what are most commonly heard. And I felt that there was a, a rather large arc or circle of people between those two positions who were asking questions, who were seeking and who wanted their seeking affirmed in much more subtle, inclusive, and certainly more compassionate ways. So that turned out to be an answer. <laughs> Good. <laughs>